Good afternoon and uh, welcome to this short webinar about certification of repositories organized by the Social Sciences and Humanities Open Cloud Project, so the SOC project. My name is Mari Klemola. Uh, I'm leading the SOC Task 8.2 uh, that is providing the support services. And our main speaker today is uh, René Van Horik. Uh, he works as a senior project manager at DANCE in the Netherlands and is involved in EU projects that work on the implementation of the European Open Science Cloud, such as uh, EOSC Hub, Freya and SOC. So about the seminar, the webinar today, so René's presentation will last for 15 minutes. And after that, we will have another 15 to 30 minutes for questions from you and answers from our panel, uh, which you can see there. Uh, we have uh, Herve Lourdes, uh, Emiliano Degl Innocenti and Tuomas Alaterra. Uh, so please use the chat to ask questions. And we've all also received some questions also beforehand. Uh, we will answer as many as time allows today. Uh, and, and we will also gather all the uh, questions and uh, publish the questions and answers uh, afterwards, uh, edited questions and answers. Uh, so the webinar uh, will be recorded and it will be made available uh, through the SOC uh, channels. With that, uh, I, I, I wish you a nice 15, half a minute, half an hour, uh, and I will now give uh, the turn to René, please. Um, well, this uh, presentation consists of four parts. First, uh, the relevance of the certification of repositories is explained. Next, the certification requirements that make up the core trust seal are covered. And the third part of this webinar describes the process of applying the Core Trust Seal certification. And the last part of this webinar elaborates on the specific assistance that the SHOCK project can provide for repositories and the repositories that manage social science, humanities, and cultural heritage data, and that would like to acquire the Core Trust Seal. Data created and used by scientists should be managed, curated and archived in such a way to preserve the initial investment in collecting them. So researchers must be certain that data held in archives remain useful and meaningful into the future. And funding authorities increasingly require continued access to data produced by the project they fund and have made this an important element of data management plans. Sustainability of repositories raises a number of challenging issues in different areas, organizational, technical, financial, legal, etc. Certification can be an important contribution to ensuring the reliability and durability of data repositories and hence the potential for sharing data over a long period of time. And the certification process also provides a valuable opportunity to enhance processes and activities. By becoming certified, repositories can demonstrate to both their service users and their funders and that an independent authority has evaluated them and endorsed their trustworthiness. Core Trust Seal. This is a community-based organization that offers certification for data repositories around the globe. Through certification of repositories, they support quality data creation, long-term access to reusable data, and promote trust and confidence in data repositories. The trustworthiness of a repository is assessed using 16 requirements. In, in this slide, you see 16 logos that represent these 16 requirements. And these requirements can be divided into three categories. The first category concerns the organizational infrastructure of the repository and contains issues such as the funding, the mission and continuity plan of the repository. And the second category covers how the repository manages digital objects. For instance, the way the integrity and the authenticity of the digital objects is organized and how the digital objects are documented. The third category, technology, uh, deals with 
with technology issues such as software and systems used, and also data security. The core trust seal goal is to ensure that data objects are, are archived in a sustainable way. And that's underpinned by a number of fundamental concepts. The, these criteria are that information about data can be found on the internet. That's the first one. The second one, that the data are accessible. Well, taking into account that relevant legislation with regard to personal information and intellectual property is into, it is into taken into the consideration. Three, that the data is available in a usable format and preserved for the long term. Four, that the data are reliable. And five, that the data are referred to by, the means, of, by means of identifiers. So these five principles, criteria, underpin uh, the, the fundamental concepts of a core trust seal. These criteria have a strong connection with, uh, to the fair guiding principles of scientific data management and stewardship that aim, de that aim to make data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So next, how can a repository receive the core trust seal certification? To obtain core trust seal certification, your repository will need to meet the 16 requirements briefly covered already. Um, and this uh, process consists of four stages. First, the submission of an application. The second stage is the review of the self-assessment by reviewers, obviously. The third stage is the revision of the application based on the remarks made by the reviewers. And then the fourth step is the approval of the certification by the core trust seal board. This submission is done in an online tool. And the application is peer reviewed by two reviewers whose conclusions are then approved by the core trust seal board. And the review process begins upon receipt of an administrative fee of 1000 euros. After feedback and revision, the core trust seal board grants this repository a core trust seal if the repository meets the criteria and the seal is valid for three years. Successful applicants are published online. At the moment, more than 80 report repositories have been certified world worldwide. Uh, some more details on the uh, uh, assignment of the, um, the requirements of the 16 require requirements. Each of the 16 requirements, the appli appli applicant has to indicate a compliance level ranging from not applicable to requirement has been fully implemented in the repository. So here you see the five compliance levels, levels. And in the review process, the applications are judged against the statements made by the repositories, uh, supported by appropriate evidence. So this evidence is, if, is uh, asked for uh, in the review process and has to be reported by the uh, repository. The collection of the information related to the certification is a team effort and works best if everyone in the repository is on board. It's a great team building exercise. That's our experience. Okay, I now come to the last part of the present short webinar and that I do with the that the project can provide. The shock project can help the repository to acquire the core trust seal in a number of ways. In the first place, to assist the repository in the certification process by explaining the procedure to acquire the core trust seal, to provide guidance in filling in the application, and in some cases, review and feedback on repository's self assessment before they add the application to core trust seal. And we also plan to organize trust workshops aligned with events related to the shock communities. So, st please stay tuned. Then there is this email address, rep-certification at sshopencloud.eu that can be used to contact the people in the shock project that can help you with any assistance in relation to the core trust seal. 
So, thank you very much for your attention. In this webinar, we have explained the relevance of the certification of repositories and the role and function of the core trust seal repository certification initiative. And the shock project can assist repositories in heritage science, humanities and social sciences to acquire the core trust seal. So thank you very much for your attention again. I now give the floor back to Mari. Thank you, René. That was very uh, short and concise. Uh, in a nutshell, what we are planning to do in, the, in uh, our support activities in SOC project. And then uh, we can now move to the questions. And we do have the panel here uh, to answer all the tricky questions you might have. Uh, so Herve, Emiliano and Thomas, probably ready. And uh, the panel today, uh, I, I would say we represent the, in addition to task 8.2 in the SOC project, we, we do represent the research, research infrastructures in heritage, science, humanities, and social sciences. And uh, well, our panel members today have a wide experience as Cortrust Seal board members, uh, reviewers of Cortrust Seal applications, and uh, as representatives of repositories that have already acquired the certifications. So, uh, and this will be the core team also providing the support activities in, in uh, task 8.2. In addition, we have uh, people from uh, uh, Daria and Clarin repositories uh, working in the task. So, uh, let's move on to the questions. There were a couple of questions we received uh, through the registration form. And the first one, and this is something I will give to Herve. So it's about the cost for the certification and uh, related to SESTA service providers. And if, uh, if there are fixed dates for submitting the, uh, the proposals. So please, Herve. Hi there, yeah. I'm not sure if the question is here. So I'm sure if they are, I'm sure they can jump in and, and clarify if necessary. Um, so the cost of certification is a uh, is a thousand euros, um, which is payable on submission of the application. Uh, it works out roughly to sort of three hundred and thirty three euros a year over the, the course of the certification period. Um, there aren't any fixed dates for submitting a proposal, but one of the things that we will do through Shock is um, is try and help coordinate the various Shock submissions uh, so that we don't kind of overwhelm the core trust seal board at any one time. Um, Thank you. Uh, and I hope that answered the question. I, I think there's also, uh, in some communities, uh, there's also the possibility to have a reduced fee for Cotras Seal if, if you have a bulk of uh, applicants. <coughs> so I don't know, we haven't considered that within SESTA, have we? Not as far as I'm aware, but it's certainly something we could look at either through uh, the individual infrastructures or possibly negotiate through the shop project as well, if there are the right number of repositories within the right period of time. Great. Thank you. And now I'd move to another question. Uh, so the uh, what a participant uh, has told, tells that he used to put uh, their research data uh, on, on the Nakala repository and uh, would like to know how the link between Nakala and EOSC will be done. So this is, uh, uh, Nakala is certainly one of the repositories uh, from the Daria community that is listed in our deliverable uh, 8.2, where we list all the repositories. Uh, it's an initial list of repositories eligible for the support. So, so we do have recognized it as a poten potential candidate for support. Uh, but however, we can't say how Nakala and EOSC will be linked. Uh, that's uh, not really our business. Uh, what we can say is that, well, uh, trustworthy data repositories capable of curating uh, fair data are uh, a, a critical and essential requirement for, for a European Open Science Cloud. So that's one more motivation to, to do the Codrust Seal certification. Uh, then if we move to the questions in the question and answers uh, section, 
So here's one. Describing storage procedures in the certification process. How to better deal with this? What is the level of detail the certification experts want to see? And this was by Genevieve. So Herve, would you be in place to respond to this? Yeah, happy to. Um, I think that the, um, the thing to remember with this particular item is that it falls within the digital object management section of the core trust seal uh, and not specifically under the technical requirements. So you would cover maybe your backup and storage procedures and that kind of thing in more detail under the technical requirements. But this is more about uh, demonstrating that from the data curator's point of view, that there are standard procedures for, for the data storage side of things from the point of kind of deposit appraisal during curation and then kind of movement into the preservation system and the access system. So a statement that you do have documented procedures throughout, ideally some kind of online overview of, of how you manage that and that these are evidenced and followed by um, followed by your curators would generally be sufficient to get you the core trust seal. Great, thank you. Uh, and uh, I mean, this is also one of the things so, that we are here for you uh, in the SOC uh, task 8.2. So we can provide support when you are, are writing your self-assessments uh, for Cotrust Seal. So uh, another question we have is, could you provide uh, two or three examples of uh, best practice repositories uh, that, uh, that uh, are fully okay <coughs> with SOC target? So this is by Claire. Uh, I'm not exactly sure that I understand the question. Uh, what I can say is that uh, uh, certified repositories certainly uh, are the ones who are uh, okay with the SOC targets and, and within the SOC goals. And we do have the list of repositories in our deliverable 8.2. And maybe somebody can add a link to the chat to that yeah, deliverable. We can do that as well. I think maybe if this is a question about um, sort of exemplars or best practices as well, um, I, I think that there's a, quite a big variety even across the shop repositories. Um, but you will find that all of the past certifications have been published on the Core Trust Deal website. So it is highly likely that you'll find a successful repository which has got some similarities to you. And also to say that uh, sometimes those similarities are all about discipline, but sometimes it might be sort of... Uh, size of repository or uh, geographic coverage of the repository as well is useful to look at. So all of those are public and available on the Core Seal website. Thank you. Uh, let's move to the next question. Uh, do you think it's worth trying to get the Core Seal certification for a metadata registry, not a data repository by Laura? So I think, Herbert, this goes to you. You are the... Uh, <laughs> Vice Chair of Cotras Seal. Um, yeah, this. Uh, I mean, this is more because it's a, an overlap with some other stuff that's going on with with fair data and everything else. The Making Fair Data a Reality report um, did set up registries as one of the key components of the uh, the future European Open Science Cloud. Uh, if somebody is looking at uh, certifying a metadata registry, uh, which, having briefly looked at this, I would say follows almost all of what you would expect from a data repository uh, in terms of expectations, then please do get in touch and it would be a great exemplar for us to help with. I think it would be generally applicable, uh, but let's have a chat and make sure we don't waste your time, but but ensure that, ensure that we get the most out of that that we can. Okay, thanks. Uh, and then we have a question from Matthias. Uh, in how far are restricted access paths the sensitive data rated in the certification process. I'm, I'm willing to give this to Herve again, but is somebody else? <laughs> so then, Herve, it's you again. Yeah, the, I mean, the sensitive data stuff is a is a little bit of a tricky one in in core trust seal because we know that um, with the broad base of of applicants, it's not. It's not uh, relevant to all of the repositories, but it's considered to be important enough to include include in the requirements. Um, it's similar in some ways to security. It's it's in there, but um, no one's pretending that a core level certification is going to provide enough detail for you to uh, for you to write a secure environment from scratch. Yeah. But um, 
But in terms of the approach within Core Trust Seal for sensitive data, uh, the expectations would be slightly higher for any organization that was holding personal data or data of another sensitive type. Um, you'll find that there'll be less leeway in, in some of the information. But as long as the, the licenses cover uh, cover this in enough detail, and there's clear enough um, process information in terms of how this is, um, in terms of how this data is managed throughout, um, then it really would be a question of your local application of this. It doesn't set specific externalized standards for handling sensitive data. Thank you, Herve. Uh, I, I would now move on to, uh, okay, and Matthias has said thanks. Thank you, Matthias. So, uh, so Emiliano, can you describe a little bit about the ERIS approach to certification of repositories? Uh, uh, so I, I know that the European Research Infrastructure for Heritage Science, uh, that you are actively evolving your quality standards. So if you can uh, uh, update us on that. Yeah, thank Mary. Thanks, Mary. Uh, it would be a pleasure to describe our approach, which is uh, the approach of a, a multidisciplinary community, which is not yet uh, an ERIC. We are in the process of applying for being an ERIC, and uh, we will be there in a couple of years. And uh, it's interesting to uh, be in this discussion because we are in a moment in our evolution where uh, we have to take some relevant decisions for the quality of our data, for the awareness of our community in these terms. And uh, also uh, those decisions will be uh, setting uh, um, some uh, uh, relevant milestones for our future in the EOSC context. So this is interesting because uh, um, different communities have different levels of uh, uh, quality, awareness uh, of uh, uh, procedures and uh, whatever is included in this discussion. And we felt that uh, um, having the CT, uh, um, the core trust seal as a reference for our DigiLab, which is our uh, digital infrastructure, is something very valuable because this will help us to uh, develop a culture of uh, um, attention to those aspects ranging from organizational, procedural, technical, which is the basis for our uh, future uh, DigiLab platform. For the moment, uh, our uh, quality management, management plans uh, are designed on the needs of our community in this specific moment, which is not our operational phase. So basically, I can say that uh, for now, the procedure is designed on some internal assessments that are performed by our domain experts. So people ranging from archaeology to uh, literary uh, studies, uh, but also chemists, physicists, because it's really an interdisciplinary community, and this means different levels of complexity to be addressed. Uh, and of course, uh, those assessments are also to be validated by the members of the IRIS advisory board, which are in charge of uh, reviewing this. Um, this evaluation for the moment is, uh, and the assessment, the whole assessment, is based on the exchange of a set of documents that are some kind of guidelines that are supposed to help the work of both by, uh, I mean, the evaluatee and the evaluator. And this is something that is meant to change, to move towards uh, something that will be closer or maybe will be CTS itself. Because, uh, as I said, uh, our approach uh, is to develop uh, uh, such a culture that will lead us to become a fair, a trustable digital repository to open heritage science data for the whole community through the EOSC. So uh, it's very important to be here in this discussion and to, um, so to say, to share our experience and to learn by the colleagues uh, in other communities that already 
are a step or maybe two in this process. So this is what I can share with you for the moment. Thank you, Emiliana. I think this also describes well uh, the, the variety of, of uh, repositories we have and also the wide landscape uh, that we are in now. And uh, we plan to be the, the community where you can talk and where you can ask questions uh, and, and, and provide the discussion platform. So I think we have another question uh, from the audience. So Rimi asks, uh, what should be kept in mind while planning to create a repository aiming for a certification in future? So, so what, Rene, do you want to reply to this? Well, my, my, what first comes in mind is if you're um, planning to create a repository, you're uh, very lucky because you do not have to make the mistakes we all have made. So look for good examples and then um, use the core trust requirements as your uh, principles to, to create a repository. That's my, that what what's comes in mind, but maybe is that, I don't know if that is uh, answering your question. What do we get in mind of planning? There are, of course, a lot of issues that, um, that, um, that are, um, that you have to take into consideration when you, plan to create a repository that starts with, of course, policy, funding, um, embedding in your uh, ecosystem. Is it, uh, is it disciplinary or uh, generic? Um, using services, uh, are you going to develop your service yourself or are you going to use an external service? Well, in any case, I think the 16 requirements are a very good um, uh, the roadmap uh, also. Um, to, uh, to to create the, the repository, or am I too uh, too? Um, is this too much propaganda or too optimistic? No, no. <laughs> I, I think it's also the case is that uh, you need to keep in mind that you need to put resources and uh, in the planning phase. So it's uh, really important to to, to plan yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a good reference point, certainly. But um, I think uh, I think the roadmap is not too much propaganda. There, but um, I think the other thing to maybe think about is that um, the getting certification doesn't just happen once. It's something that you renew over time, and you will find that easiest to design and build and certify a repository if you've got a managed collection of business information records. You know your basic policies and procedures in place, um, and we know that really using and managing those procedures uh, on as part of your day-to-day -day service makes well running the service better and makes recertification relatively easy over time um you know that's that's a direct lesson that we've heard from from people renewing against the core trust seal so yeah managing that information and the evidence is kind of designed within core trust seal uh that the evidence that, that's being sought should be the things that you would need to be running that service anyway so hopefully a virtuous circle thank you uh, I know that uh, we really haven't focused on the FAIR principles today, but they have come up a couple of times in, in, uh, in, in different talks and in parts of the webinar. So I was, uh, Tuomas, this is for you. So I, I uh, there's the Nordic EOS project, among others, that's uh, also working with the FAIR and certification. Can you tell us a little bit of the work done in the Nordic region? Yes, I could do that. Uh, thanks, Mari, and uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, so um, I, I'm sure you've noted that there are a number of initiatives dealing with, with FAIR and certification, and Nordic EOSC uh, is one of those regionally focused European uh, science cloud projects. Uh, in there, Mari and myself are uh, part, of, part of that project as well. Uh, and the focus there is uh, Nordic and, and Baltic countries. So the work package for uh, in that project addresses repository certification as well as verification of repositories. And uh, we had a very large uh, webinar uh, yesterday on on kind of landscaping and maturity uh, regarding fair. Uh, some of uh, some of the attendees might have uh, seen us there there yesterday. So uh, until until now, the focus has been on kind of landscaping, 
uh, and evaluating the fairness of data objects in various repositories. Uh, these two things, uh, I mean, while uh, FAIR and uh, certification are separate concepts, they are part of the same ecosystem. And uh, as Rene pointed out, that uh, uh, data needs management, uh, so does uh, FAIR data. Um, so there is nothing stays, even if you make it FAIR now, uh, it doesn't stay that way without trust. So that's where the um, making research data widely, uh, widely available and usable, um, sooner or later, it comes closer to the um, traditional repository world uh, and concepts of data curation and data stewards, uh, which we, as I said, usually find in institutional or subject specific repositories. Uh, so, um, uh, Nordic EOS is about uh, um, finding fair homes for the, for resource data alone, so creating and uh, fertilizing the, the idea there. Um, and the repositories uh, are there, um, sort of the places uh, our, our users can trust. Uh, uh, so, I, I, I'd say that the uh, Nordic EOS project combines uh, what we are talking about in 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 Choc uh, eight point two about certification and um, and the sort of the verification landscape um, in the next phase where we are aiming to support repositories in the Nordic and Baltic regions um, in adopting fair certification schema and uh, about what is for, uh, fair certification schema uh, that's probably uh, true that uh, Mari and, and Herve know more about uh, that uh, than uh, I do at the moment because it hasn't yet yet been released it will be a tool in the, in the project uh, uh, but basically uh, uh, CDS and uh, fair, fair requirements uh, will be the building blocks for that so CDS uh, as a certificate has a pivotal role uh, for the Nordic EOS project as well. Um, so in practice, I guess, uh, and this will sound very familiar to what we've said in the in the webinar so far, is it will be about general awareness raising about. Uh, fairness of data objects about certification. We will be running a few webinars or workshops. Uh, workshops, uh, I guess they are whether Corona situation permits us doing so. Uh, they are scheduled until the uh, until early next year or, or somewhere there. And uh, we will be, uh, there will be a possibility through uh, Nordic Geos project as well to Get help with the reviewing self assessments uh, carried out by the uh, aspiring repositories. So th it's another another venue for uh, getting support in getting certified. Oh yes, thank you. If you are a Nordic uh, uh, from the Nordic countries, or, or yes, and all, I mean Baltic. also uh, we will be uh, publishing uh, documents. Uh, uh, they, uh, they will be freely avail avail available. Uh, so if you if you happen to be yeah. not in the Nordic countries, you'll still get to see those. Uh, you just uh, uh, can't uh, rely on other support modes that are provided in the project. Thank you. So with that, uh, I don't see any further questions from the audience today. So. Uh, Uh, so then I would like to thank our panelists today. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the audience for joining today. And uh, you can contact uh, our task by using the email or joining our public mailing list. We will also have a, a web presence on the SOC website in, in the near future. And we will be informing you all about it. And then just go and see our report. Uh, and uh, we will also be organizing workshops uh, in the future uh, dates to be announced later. So, Can Rene I, has. Yes, yes, I, I put it all in, in, in the chat. Please, now you're all here, do click on the feedback form when, before you, uh, before you uh, go for a coffee or whatever, because we are very much interested in the feedback of this event and especially the last question. We would, we would be very happy to get. 
suggestions from you to um, for events or activities we can do to um, um, yeah to to get the certification uh, level on a to, to, to on a higher level and to help you to, uh, to uh, disseminate more knowledge on the quarter seal or acquiring the quarters etc repeating yes. myself because it was already explained in the webinar but um, you probably will have uh, things we forgot that would okay. be great yeah. yes so uh so we are hoping now you know us uh and it will be easier to get in contact and get in touch with us uh we are happy to answer any questions uh regarding the certification and the support activities so with that uh i would like to also thank uh, thank you, Martina and Nico, uh, on the background, uh, taking care of the questions and all the technical and the webinar technical side. Uh, and thank you, everybody. Uh, yeah. Please stay safe. And uh, we see yeah, already we a suggestion in the chat that, uh, that yes, we will that's a good one. Yeah, we will record. And as I said, we will. Uh, this will be published, and also the question answer session will be published. So thank you, everybody. Uh, have a nice day. Stay safe and. Uh, let's be in touch. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.